Sometimes some army traditions around the world look rather unusual. For example, this is what the changing of the guard looks like in the Greek army. The guard, consisted of selective strong and tough men, between 1 meter 87 and 2 meters 10 centimeters tall, is dressed in rather bizarre attire a full white skirt with tight wool stockings, a velvet hat and boots with a pom-pom. Of course, all this can be explained by the centuries-old tradition and history and there are interesting facts about the fustanelle skirt and pompons, but still it looks pretty weird. Here's another example, the so-called hate dance on the border of India and Pakistan. Apart from the unusual costumes, it's the act itself which is of interest. The ritual takes place regularly and is a matter of pride for both countries. Despite such ceremonial unusualness, in general most people associate the army with strength, protection and discipline, but not every army throughout history has been like that. There have been armies both naked and ridiculously dressed, armies of zombies and the mentally ill, and in this video you will see all that and even more. Let's go! The Celtic Naked Army The Celts recognized no one's dominance and were free and fearless people, but the Roman Empire, flourishing at that time, didn't abandon its attempts to conquer the territories belonging to the Celts. Whether they fought in the nude is a rather confusing question. At different times, in different tribes in different battles, there was one or another manifestation of this behavior, many Roman chronicles write about it. But not only the Celts, many nations had a tradition of wearing a minimum of clothing during battle, not necessarily completely naked, for example, warriors went only waist naked, and this had about the same meaning. Being naked before a battle was both a display of bravery and intimidation of the enemy, and was supposed to provide support and understanding of gods, combined with magical symbols tattooed on the skin. Can you imagine a maximum case of what an army of tattooed warriors looked like? There's also a practical explanation for nudity. By undressing, warriors got freedom of movement, a naked man is more difficult to grasp during a fight. By the way, the Gauls were also tribes of the Celtic group, the same Gauls who inspired the French in the legendary series of comics and films about Asterix and the Fat Obelix, who by analogy can be said to be waist naked. With a magic potion brewed by a druid, they confronted the Romans led by Caesar, who invaded Gaul. The Army of the Order of Saint Lazarus If you combine medieval religious fanaticism, war and terminal illness, you'll get the Order of Saint Lazarus. It's the most closed military monastic order of the Crusades. And it was the most closed because the soldiers were rallied by leprosy, a deadly infectious disease. The disease could cause terrible changes in a person's appearance. It was precisely because lepers were frightening and could infect others that they were isolated from healthy people. Over time, the order also began to admit ordinary people with leprosy, which could include knights and soldiers, thus forming a full army of lepers, or the living dead. The lepers were nominally already dead, and dying in battle was more honorable than rotting alive. The advantage of such an army was that the soldiers had nothing to lose, the affected parts of the body felt no pain, the warriors fought like madmen, terrified the enemy with their ugly appearance and fear of infection. They also marched in the front lines, thereby giving the healthy soldiers a chance to stay in combat longer. So it's not an exaggeration to say that there was a real zombie army in the Middle Ages. The Prussian Army of Giants, or the Potsdam Giants. The Prussian King Friedrich Wilhelm I had an unusual hobby of his own. He collected tall men to form a regiment of giants for his army. He not only collected and recruited them around the country, but also bought them for huge sums of money, solicited them as living gifts and eventually even tried to breed an entire race of giant men. One famous donor was the Russian Emperor Peter I, who thereby established relations with the Prussian king. The salaries of these soldiers depended precisely on height, not military ability or rank. The Dahomey Amazons Not so long ago, in the 17th century, an army of fearless, wild and fierce women appeared in the kingdom of Dahomey, who terrified European colonizers. Foreigners called them the Dahomey Amazons. These women were not just fierce warriors, but elite troops who defended their king during the bloodiest of battles and were considered untouchables. Beheading their enemies was their speciality. And this is certainly not a myth, the last surviving Dahomey Amazon woman died not long ago, in 1979, at the age of 100. In the 19th century, the Amazon army numbered around 6,000 female soldiers, a third of the kingdom's entire army. 
For two centuries these women held the whole of Africa in terror. Their military training began at the age of eight, and included many tests of endurance. Amazons were not only considered untouchable, they were not allowed to marry or have children, and a man who touched such a warrior woman faced the death penalty. The American Inflatable Army A top-secret battalion emerged in America during the World War II with the stage arts as its weapon. These special forces united under its wing artists, sound engineers, and other members of the creative intelligentsia. Between 1944 and 1945, the Ghost Army prepared and staged no less than 20 missions. The fighters disoriented the enemy with a fake army of plywood and inflatable tanks and cannons. They created grand armories out of empty boxes covered with camouflage netting, supporting all these manipulations with fake radio transmissions. The enemy thereby also failed to understand where an entire army was suddenly coming from and made wrong tactical decisions, hitting the wrong targets, wasting ammunition and losing soldiers in a war with a non-existent enemy. Because gun sets could be moved quickly and easily, these toy troops would quickly appear and just as quickly disappear, confusing the German troops. Although the Ghost American Army was the first official unit of its kind, the art of disorienting the enemy had been around for a long time. An example of this is the well-known Trojan horse, the Vatican Army. In reality, the Vatican itself didn't and doesn't have an army, however, back in 1506, the Pope ordered the Vatican to hire Swiss soldiers, who had worked as mercenaries in many European states. Since then, a Swiss guard of 150 men had guarded the pontiffs and the papal residence. The mercenary troops were twice able to distinguish themselves in military action, during the World War II, when Nazi troops invaded Rome. The guardsmen declared that if German troops violated the Vatican, they would fight to the last bullet. Not a single German soldier breached the border during the entire World War II. Although, it's clear that it was not so much about the courage of the Swiss guards, but about secret agreements and secret deals between the Vatican and the Third Reich, which are still not much advertised by historians. Danish Military Dogs to be precise, the Dog Army is an elite unit of the Danish Navy engaged in deep reconnaissance and maintaining Danish sovereignty in northern and eastern Greenland. This unit is called Sirius. It's patrolled by two men and 14 dogs for six months. Sirius may take part in combat operations, although its main task is to maintain order. The unit was founded in 1941 to prevent German troops from landing in Greenland. Sirius is also called a sled or ski patrol. Basically, it turns out to be a kind of paw patrol for adults. Israel's Army of Autistics Before taking up their duties, the special soldiers undergo a three-month training course at a college where not only the military but also psychologists work with them. The special regiment undergoes special operations to analyze data from satellites and acquire images from the Earth's surface. Such work requires total immersion and great concentration, which autistic people are able to do far better than ordinary people. The soldiers serve the same three years as ordinary soldiers, but with one difference, the service is voluntary. Since the experiment has been a success, the soldiers with autism plan to be recruited for other positions in the future. Somalia The civil war that started in 1988 left the Federal Republic of Somalia in chaos, which it hasn't been able to recover for almost 35 years. You may even hear the argument that Somalia is a state of anarchy or even libertarianism. Somalia's armed forces may astonish not only by their structure but by the fact of their existence. The number of troops is only about 20,000 people, which against a background of 15 million population looks quite frivolous. The fleet of equipment has 10 tanks and 100 armored vehicles. Not long ago the United Arab Emirates funded the development of the Somali Navy. Today it has 200 sailors, and only a few boats as equipment. Interestingly, the country has the longest coastline in all of Africa. Most inhabitants prefer to join various rebel outfits and militias so anyone can be enlisted. Men and women between the ages of 16 and 49 are conscripted. In 2005 the United Nations put the current government on a list of organizations that recruit children for the war effort. The ridiculous thing is that with all that is going on in the country, the Somali armed forces simply cannot protect the state in the event of an attack from outside. They are simply too weak and preoccupied mainly with internal fighting. These are the unusual armies of the past and present that can be found on our planet. Thank you for watching and for the Somali likes. See you soon.